Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue talking about the process of using treated and untreated groups to look at the effect of a policy. And in particular, we're going to be using one of the most high octane tools that economists have to work with. Uh, and not economists and other social scientists or anybody who's interested in causal inference. And that is difference in difference. Now, the basic idea of difference in difference is that we are looking for the effect of a policy on a treated group. And we're going to adjust for some facts that might make it difficult to look at that effect, some back doors, by picking a control group that we can look at at the same time. The basic idea is this. We are interested in a situation. We have some treatment, and we're going to call the treatment D here. It's common in treatment effects literature to call the treatment D instead of X. We're going to go with it. We're going to call the outcome Y. We're interested in the effect of D on Y. And in particular, what we have here is we're looking at a group that we can observe before the treatment went into place and also after the treatment went into place. And there's lots of examples like this. You can imagine anytime we have some sort of bill or policy that was put into place, we can observe what was happening beforehand. We can also observe what was happening afterwards. But as we all know, that's not enough to establish causality. There's likely to be some sort of back door, something else that was changing over the same time period that could have caused the changes in the outcome besides the treatment itself. Now, there's lots of different things this could be depending on the, on the context. I'm just going to group it all together and say time, something changed over time that caused the outcome to change besides the policy that we're interested in. That's a back door. Now, why does why do I have an arrow from time to the treatment itself? Well, remember, the treatment was enacted at a particular period of time. So if I look at the period before the treatment went into effect, well, it's, there's no treatment. And if I look at the period after the treatment went into effect, there is a treatment. So time and the treatment are changing at the same place, right? So there's a, there's a back door there from treatment to time and then back to the outcome variable. So we have an obvious fix here. We can measure time, right? We can calculate what time it was when these things were observed. So why don't we just control for time? Well, it turns out we actually can't do that. Well, why not? Because time and treatment are perfectly locked together. There was a before period and an after period. So if we control for time, what are we going to do? We're going to look at what part of the treatment we can explain with time, and then we're going to chuck it out. We're going to subtract it out. If we do that, there's not going to be any variation in the treatment left. Before, here's where the treatment was. Nothing. After, here's where the treatment was. And if we take out the difference that's due to time, there's no difference left at all. We can't do anything with that, right? There needs to be some variation. You have some people with the treatment, some people without, if you're going to look at a, at a treated and untreated group. So we can't just control for time. So what can we do? So we're going to bring in a control group. We're going to bring in some other group that did not get the treatment in either period, that never got the treatment. And so if we look at that, that's going to change the diagram to this. Here's our new diagram. So now we have two groups. We have our treatment, we have our outcome, and uh, we know that time is going to affect both the treatment and the outcome. But think about it. If we expect that time is going to affect the outcome similarly for both the treatment and control groups, ah, there we go. So now we can control for time. We control for time, we no longer get rid of all the variation in treatment because we still have that control group that never had the treatment at all. So any sort of effect of time that we might see, we would expect to happen to both the treatment and control groups. We can take that out and any difference we still have left in our treatment group, that's what was due to the treatment. Now, something else to keep in mind here is that the groups themselves, our treatment and control groups, they might be different for some reason. But Conveniently, we can basically use fixed effects here. We can control for the identity of the group themselves to adjust for those things that are fixed about the group. So maybe they're a little bit different beforehand, but that's okay because we're going to take out those group differences that they had beforehand. And maybe they change across time and that that's okay because we're going to take out the difference that happens across time. The effect that we're going to get is basically how much larger was the change over time for the treatment group than for the control group. Imagine for a second that we're interested in the effect of some sort of shot that makes you grow taller faster. Now, we're only going to give you this shot and we want to know, well, what's the effect of the shot on your height? But we can't just look at you before and after. Let's say we're giving it to you when you're 12 years old because you're growing pretty tall anyway. Let's say that we have you and let's say your twin sibling. We would expect that both of you would grow taller over time, but you'd probably grow taller by about the same amount. If we just look at you at age 12 and you at age 13, then if neither of you had gotten the shot, we would expect you both to grow at the same rate. 
let's say just for argument's sake that you're a little bit taller than your twin. Your twin is five feet tall, you're five foot two. Now we would expect that if, you're, if they're five foot tall and you're five foot two at age 12, then maybe at age 13, they're gonna be five foot two and you're gonna be five foot four. But this, the difference would have stayed the same without the shot. But we give you the shot and we notice, oh, they're not five foot four, they're five foot six. That tells us that the, the effect of that shot was to make you grow taller by two inches. Because we have a good idea of what you would have been if you hadn't gotten the shot. You would have been two inches taller than your sibling still, but you did get the shot, and so we see that difference. That's the basic idea of difference and difference. And we can see it in action in an animation here. So we start out with data for the control and the treatment group, and it's before and after treatment. We see what the average outcome was both before and after the treatment in the treatment and control groups. We take out the difference that we see in the control group. And then whatever's left of the difference in the treatment group, that is our difference in differences estimate of the treatment effect. And we're controlling for the changes over time because we looked at both the change over time for control and treatment. And we're controlling for the differences between the groups. We're taking out the differences on average between them. Let's actually do this. Let's, let's put this into action. Let's do this in R. So I'm going to create some fake data here. So first I'm going to load in the tidyverse and I'm going to create some data. And this is going to show you the kind of data that we need to have in order for difference in differences to work. So I have I've created a year variable here that goes from 2002 to 2010. And I've randomly assigned each observation to be in one of those years. I've also randomly assigned each person to either be in the treated group or the untreated group. Now, I do want you to be careful. Treated group doesn't necessarily mean that they're always being treated, right? There's a before and after period for the treated group. So if it's before the treatment went into effect for the treated group, we would still call you the treated group. Now, we're going to say that the treatment went into effect in 2007. Okay, so every year 2007 and later, that is the treatment period. And that's when the treatment group gets the treatment. The untreated group remains untreated the whole time. We can then create a variable that says, are you actually being treated right now? And you are being treated right now if it is after 2007 and you're in the treated group. Then we can create our outcome variable. So we're gonna say, first of all, we got some random noise. We also are gonna have a difference between the groups. We're gonna say that the average of Y is gonna be one bigger if you are in the treated group. We're also gonna have a difference by year. We're gonna say that things would have changed over time anyway. Every year, we expect that the outcome increases by 0.5. We also expect that actually being treated is gonna increase the value of Y by two. So let's create this random data. And we have differences over time. We have differences between the groups. So how are we going to actually calculate the difference in difference estimates? So the first thing we're going to do, like we did in the animation, is to get the mean of the outcome variable within each group and before and after the treatment went into effect. So we're grouping by the group that you're in and whether it's before or after, and then we're taking the average. So let's do that. We get our means. And let's look at our table of means. So what we get here, uh, we get if you're in treated and it's this is false, it's before, the average is 1,003. If you're treated but it's after, the average is 1,007. If you're untreated and it's before, it's 1,002. And if it's untreated and after, it's 1,004. So we're gonna create two differences. We're gonna see how the untreated group changed from before to after. And we're gonna see how the treated group changed from before to after. So first let's create the before and after difference for the untreated. So I'm going to filter the data to just look at the untreated group and just look at the after period. And I'm going to take the Y and I'm going to subtract it from the treated, untreated, the untreated group in the before period, right? And look at the before to after difference for the untreated group. And that in particular is a difference of 2.2. It increased by 2.2 from before to after. We're going to do the same thing for the treated group. I'm going to filter the data, the means to just look at the treated group after. I'm going to compare it to just the treated group before. Look at that. So we notice that the untreated group improved by 2.2 points going from before to after. So we would expect some improvement anyway, even if there was no treatment involved. But for the group where there is treatment, the increase was 4.3, which is a bigger increase, which tells us that the treatment had some sort of effect because it made the before to after difference bigger. So then we take the difference in those differences, that gives us our DID effect, and then we calculate it out, and we say that the treatment made Y go up by two more than for the untreated group. So the effect of treatment on, the, on Y is 2.09. The true effect, of course, was two, so we got pretty much spot on. Now this is one of the most widely applicable methods of causal inference because it's very easy to apply because all you need is a treatment that 
went into effect at some point. So we can observe the same group or the same person both before and after. And we need some people who got the treatment and some people who didn't. That's all that we need. Uh, and whenever we have that, we can use difference in difference. Now, there are some additional assumptions that go into this. We have to, for example, assume that the before to after difference would have been the exact same if there was, in fact, no treatment effect. This might not be true. It might have been that those two groups were already sort of trending apart, in which case the treatment just sort of picked up those trends that were already going on and the treatment wasn't really at play. But as long as those trends were, in the same, were on the same level beforehand and they would have been continued on the same level afterwards, we're pretty much good to go. And so this is a very widely applicable and it gets used all the time. And I, I, I recommend that you look out in the world and try to think, where could I use this? Where are there policies that we can observe both the before period and the after period? And we have both the treated group and a comparable untreated group to compare them to. And that's some good food for thought. All right, that's it. I will see you next time.